You, listen, you can't accuse the Lamb of God of sin. John the Baptist, who's John the Baptist? He's a pretty holy guy. He wore camel's hair, he ate honey. And look what he says of Jesus Christ. What does he say? Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Oh, my friends, if you don't like it, close your ears and run away. Run away because the light is coming to the world. But people love darkness rather than the light. Why am I here? That's one truth I want to know. Why do I exist? Come on, lads. What an Italian school these days. How? What's true? What? Why am I here? It's a good question. I'm sorry, you like you. You can try to escape it, but why am I here? You don't know. You don't know. He doesn't know. You don't know. None of you know, do you? Got one. Well, that's your, your mom did give birth to you. But why are you here? What is your purpose? What is the reason you are here? To play, to play what? Well, let, me, let me enlighten you, mate. You were actually made to know God. You were made to know God. Not just, you know, know that he's up there and he's existed, but actually know him personally. That's why you were made. Through his son. You see, if you come, yeah, if you come to the Father through the Son, you'll be accepted. And then not only will you be accepted, he'll give you a new heart, right? And he'll change you. You may not make you a preacher, but you'll be different. You'll start to love the things that he loves and hate the things that he hates. See you guys have a nice day, yeah? Have a nice day. Busy man. You see, you were made to love and cherish God. You were actually made, your, your eyes, your tongue, to sing, your, your mind, everything about you. You were made to love and worship God. So have you done that? Have you done that? Have you honestly done that? Can you say, I have worshipped God with my life? Or not? It's a big question. It's why you, it's the a reason you exist. You were made to worship God. Have you done that? Let's be honest. Come on. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Every single one of us has gone to his own way. Right? We've all forsook God. We've all lied. We've all done things that we know wrong. Even even your own standards, standards in life. You've even failed your own standards, haven't you? Right? I'm never going to do that again. What do you do? You do it again. I'm not going to talk to my wife like that again. What do you do? You do it again. Oh, yeah. We've heard it all before. You see, you've even fallen short of your own standards. Forget the Bible. Look at your own standards. Have you lived up to them? Have you honestly? Guys, let's be honest. We're a broken mess. We are a broken people. We are sinful. We are a mess. We are hopeless. We are rebels. Do you think you're a rebel against God? Are you? Oh, no, I love God. Yeah, I don't do anything he tells me to do, but I love him. Come on. You know, you've got, you, you got to call a spade a spade, haven't you? There's a lot of people, isn't there, that say, I love God, don't they? But then look at the life. What does the life say? They don't love God, exactly. Do, do you think that God's... Like, fooled by that. By people who say that they love him, but actually don't. He's not, is he? Because God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. 
he looks at your intentions. He doesn't just look at what your hands and feet do and what your lips speak. He actually looks at your your heart. How do you think God? How do you feel? How do you think God feels about your heart? Don't know. Well, let me tell you. Hey, <laughs> let me tell you. God says that your heart is evil. There's only one God, my friend. That's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, it's one God. We're, no, Christians always, Christians have always believed in one God. Ask me, do I believe in three gods? One God, three persons. The word, by the way, you know, one God, three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's amazing. Why? Because that transcends mathematical laws. That transcends the laws of physics. God's not like me and you, sir. Don't expect God, when he says he's one, that he literally means that he's only one in person, too. By the way, by the way, he has a little, he has a little lesson for you. You know in the Bible, you know in the Bible when it says the Lord our God is one? You know when Moses said that? The Lord our God is one? Uh, yeah, but even the Quran says that God's word cannot be corrupted. And the Bible, the Bible is God's word. Well, the word one... No, he says, I believe the Bible, didn't you? No, I... No, he says he doesn't. I believe in Christianity. <laughs> he, he's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. I'm a, I'm a Christian, right? But you know, even in the Old Testament, before Christianity came along, you see, it, bless you. The, the, the Bible's always taught that God is one. But the word one there doesn't mean one in every sense of the word. It means one as in unified. The Lord your God is unified. Sorry? Do I believe bacon is forbidden? No. Do you know that Jesus came to remove all those dietary laws? We're no longer under those dietary laws. Jesus said, don't worry about what goes into your mouth because it's going to come out the other end. Worry about what comes out of your mouth. Now, I would say this though. If there's some food that you think you shouldn't eat it, don't eat it. Don't sin against your conscience. If you think it's wrong, don't do it. It's, that's, that's okay. But no, like, there's no dietary laws on the Christian now. Uh, uh, whatever we eat, whatever we drink, we can do it all to the glory of God. See, there was a time where God said, don't eat this and don't eat that in Leviticus chapter 11. But that was a specific commandment for a people at a certain time to tell them, hey, you're going to be different to the other nations. You're not going to eat that food. It was a physical way of demonstrating difference. Now, the Christian is different by doing whatever he eats to the glory of God. That's how he's going to be different. So, it's a good question though. I mean, it's a fair question. Can I eat bacon and still get to heaven? Yeah, you can. Thank, thank God, right? Hey, and I'll tell you what, right? Do you think God's more bothered about other things? Maybe too? Like, like love and mercy and justice? Hey, let me ask you. Do you think God cares more about bacon, fat, or justice and love and mercy? Which one, which one is a more weightier matter? Bacon or love? Which one? Love. See, even you know, like, deep down there is this, like, there's obviously things that matter more than others. And what goes into your mouth? Don't worry about it because it's coming out the other end. Worry about what comes out of your mouth. What words come out of your mouth? 
How do you speak about God? Do you say that God doesn't have a son? That's denying him. Do you say Jesus was just a prophet? That's denying him. Do you say it like God is not triune? That's denying him. You've got to be careful. You know, listen, right? There's some people, right, they use the tongues in a really bad way. They swear at people, they curse people, they lie. But then what about people who just, they just say something different about who God is? You know, sometimes people say, we're all God. No, we're not. Uh, we're all part of God. No, we're not. Only those who are born again are children of God. Only those who have experienced spiritual birth from above are gods who belong to God. Do you belong to God, sir? Do you want to know God, sir? Something in you want to know God? Something in you sometimes feel a bit like just a bit like empty and like why am I here? And like what, what's God, what's actually God like? Well, my friend, you find all them answers in Jesus Christ. Not in any prophet. You find all those answers in Jesus. Sorry? Just say that, I can't hear you. Sorry, what was your question? Why does God have a God? In what, in what kind of way do you mean? Does Jesus have a God? Jesus worships the Father. Does he have a God? Yeah, so which one better? Like you're asking no, you, like, you worship the Father. Or you worship yeah, so. Jesus? Like, well, let me ask you this. Are you going to be willing to listen to my answer? Yeah. Alright. Like, does God have a God? Does God have a God? So Jesus yeah. Yeah. has always worshipped the Father and been one with the Father. Okay, I'm not so in that sense, God the Son has God the Father. But what we have to understand is that doesn't mean that that Jesus is any less than the Father. Because in John, I never made that argument. I'm, I'm just saying, because you, the, 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 the conclusion would be, if God has a God, therefore he is less than God. I I'm just saying, that is one conclusion that many Muslims come to. There's two gods. If well, the, God has a God. No, there's one God, three mother, persons. If my mother has a mother, that's two mothers. If your God has a God, that's two gods. You're, you're a polytheist. Is, is it possible that... Is, is it possible that um, maybe human examples might not display how good God is? So we just turn up our brains? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there is only a certain, there's a certain limit to how far we can go when it comes to God, using illustrations. Okay, does the Father have a God? Do you, does the Father have a God? So you're not answering my question. Does the Father have a God? But are you able to answer my question first? Would you recognise that logic and reason and parables and illustrations can only take us so far when it comes to understanding the nature and character of God. We know that we know God is one though. We know that we, we can both agree God is one. Yes, we can both agree that God's eternal. God is one. No, eternal. God is eternal. So he's not one? No, I'm not, I'm, I'm just saying that. Okay, he's eternal, but is he one? Yes. You, so you're not, you're not, you're not listening, man. I agree, You're not, yeah, okay. Now, do you understand eternality? Yes. You understand what it's like to live there's forever. No time. There's no time. Do you understand what it's like to have no beginning? No, I don't. So then you have limitations when it comes to understand eternality. Okay. But yet you believe it. Believe what? That God is eternal. I believe God is eternal. So there, an eternal being needs to exist in order for us to exist. Great. We're now, contingent now hear this out. There is something about the nature and character of God that you do believe, yet you cannot comprehend. And your illustrations would only take you so far to understand it. Likewise, likewise, God is one God, three persons. That transcends our understanding. That shows us that God is like no other being. Okay, so, so is the Father the Creator? Father, the Father is creator in one sense. Is the Father the creator? 
Well, all things were made through Jesus Christ, Colossians 1 says. The Father created through the Son. Is the Father Lord? Is he Lord? Jesus is Lord, the Father is Lord, the Spirit is Lord. How many Lords is that? Three. Three Lords. Three. Believe in three Lords. Thank you. You, you, see, you see, you're doing what every Muslim does, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work like that, guys. You have to understand, when we come to Scripture, we have to be humble. We have to come to God and recognize that this God is not like you and me. He's not like you and me, but he's not. And by the way, the Bible does not teach three gods. The Bible teaches one God. The Lord your God, O Israel, is one. It always has. Now what the Muslims do is this. The Muslims say, well, you're saying Jesus is God. And I'm like, yeah, amen. You're saying the Father is God. And I'm like, yeah, amen. And you're saying the Holy Spirit is God. And I'm like, yeah, amen. There you go. One, two, three. What they're forgetting is this. We are not like God. God's not like the way that, you know, like existence, mathematical. God's not bound by mathematical laws. Let me ask you this. Is Allah bound by maths? What's that, sir? Allah is a false God, sir. But I'm talking about Allah. Is, in, is, is, Allah, is Allah subject to math? Is he under mathematical law? Is Allah under mathematical law? Or is he above it? I'm just wondering because if your God... Now listen, Allah... Allah is one person, right? He has never known what it's like to be in a relationship with someone. It's not a person. Well, I, I'm just saying that Allah is an ind is he an individual? Does he have personality? Does he have character? Well, of course, he's not a person, is he? He's not a person. Is he? he's not a person is he? Well, Jesus is God and he's a person. He's a prophet. <laughs> My friend, a person is someone who was... Jesus, Jesus was more than a prophet. God's beyond your comprehension. Exactly, God's behind me comprehension. So, so this is what I mean, he's just proved it. The fact that God is triune is above my comprehension. That doesn't mean I deny it, right? Just because something's above my comprehension doesn't mean I should deny it. Can't get it. Right? They can't get it. It's too big for them to not be able. Exactly. But it. but you believe by faith, don't you? You say, God, listen, your ways are not my ways, your thoughts are not my thoughts. But you know what, God? I'm gonna trust you, I'm gonna believe your word, and I'm gonna listen to you. That's I mean, wait a minute, right? There's lots of things that about <laughs> Yes, yeah, sir, sorry. How Jesus is gonna know the hour? Why Jesus is gonna know the hour? Yeah, well, judgment I'll, day. Wait, wait, judgment day. Did you know about the judgment day? Listen. Listen, listen. Yeah. Sir, so can I ask a question? Because of that, because of that, are you going to deny everything about him? So you asked the question. I'm answering this guy's question first. This, is that going to stop you from believing Jesus Christ? Believe Jesus no, so, you. No, no, you don't. Your, your Jesus is just a prophet. Our Jesus is the Son of God. Our Jesus is the Son of God and always has been. God bless you, man. The Gospel of John, too, man. Take the Gospel of John. Yeah. Guys, listen. The Bible teaches that Jesus is the Son of God. Respect the people of the book and just listen for one minute. Look. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now wait a minute, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So you got Word, and you got God. And the Word was God. How can the Word be separate to God, and yet be God? Unless God is triune. Unless God is triune. Now listen, Christians don't like walk around going, God's Trinity, and it's totally easy to understand. It's not. It's above our comprehension, but it's there. It's there in Scripture. So we we'll have to believe it. Do you believe Jesus is God? Yes. Do you believe he's all-knowing? John 1-1 one, one there. The one, sir, no, the, sir I, I will answer your first question. You're asking, I can only answer one question at a time. What question? Do you believe he's all-knowing? Yes. So why does he know the hour? 
When did he say that? When? No, when, but when did he say it? Did he say it? Did he, did he, no, you're not, you're not hearing me out. Did he say it when he was with the father? Yeah, hear me out, guys, 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 guys. Don't get too, don't get too ahead of yourselves. Don't get too much ahead of yourselves. Don't call people names. Respect the people in the book. Respect. Yeah, Allah is a false god. That's true. That's not disrespectful. That's true. Well, Allah comes along 700 years later through the prophet Muhammad and says Jesus isn't the son of God. Even though the Bible, which the Quran says can never be corrupted, tells us that Jesus is the Son of God. The, the, the word of God cannot be corrupted. You can Google it. Just Google it. I don't know the verse, but Google it. Get your, get your phone out. Google Quran. The word of God cannot be corrupted. You claim something now. Now, but then all of a sudden the Bible got corrupted. The Bible got became wrong. But I'll answer your question. Jesus is God. You claim because he became man. Jesus became man. So in some way, let me let, let, let me let me read it for you. I'll, I'll read Philippians chapter two. Allah's the Aramaic word. I thought you need to read, mate. Read what? Read your the Bible. Bible. Yes, yeah, so I need definitely. Research. I'm about to read the Bible. No, There's no such word as God in the Bible. You just it comes said from Allah. You, he said he no, I don't even know what Allah. Allah, Allah comes from Aramaic. Where is the first? Allahu, Allahu. Where was the where, where, What was the Bible? Which is the first in the Aramaic? No, it's Hebrew. Aramaic. No, it the whole Aramaic. The Old Testament mate. was Hebrew. You don't even know, mate. How could you yeah, talk no, about Aramaic? Aramaic? The Bible's Hebrew, yeah, yeah. Greek, and Aramaic. The Bible's not just Aramaic. Hey, guys, let me read this to you, right? Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though was in the form of God, or what? Jesus was in the form of God, did not account equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant and being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. You see, God became human. Jesus left behind the privileges of being the Son of God. Did that see, make him cease of being the Son of God? No. It just means that when Jesus came, he was willing to limit himself for the sake of being made fully like us as a human. I mean, listen, if he if he came down and he just didn't really become human, like he was still not actually human, he was basically God, then he can't sympathize with us. But no, he became like us. He was tempted. Matthew chapter 4, Jesus was tempted. Have you been tempted to sin? No, no, let me ask you quick, let me ask Yeah, 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 man, I've been, I've been tempted to sin today. We've all been tempted. Jesus was tempted. Yes, yeah, sir, got, got a question? Have you ever read the Quran? I read some of it. So you never read all of it? Well, I can't speak Arabic and you can't actually understand the Quran properly. The English version? No, the English version, if I started coming, you'd say it's English, it's not Arabic. It's not... A, yeah, that's why it's not called the Quran, it's called the meaning of the Quran. You can't read the Quran unless you read it in Arabic. I've read some of it, yeah. It's really sad. It's sad. Because, because Muhammad, he tells, he tells you to kill the Christians, behead the Jews. Yes, he does, he does. Yeah, 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 so the, the Quran's really full of bad things, my friend. But, but, be, be, be not of despair, because there is truth in the Bible. And the Bible says, love your enemies and pray for your enemies. You never read the Quran, you call him Allah, false God, you never read the Quran. Well, the thing is, is I don't have to read all the Quran to know that it's not true. No, you don't. No, you don't. So are you going to know any information? No, you, you, I have the Bible. Let me ask you this, if I work in a bank and I've got to find out all the false notes, I need to check if anyone's got any false notes. Do I study all the false notes? What? Yes, you do. No, 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 you don't. You actually don't. What do you do? You study the true note. No, you got mental Go see no, guys, guys, come on, let's just strip back. Let's leave God and our women. If you work in a bank, how do you know if a note is false? You study that which is true, the true note. You can test everything that's false by the true note. Likewise, this is the truth. How do you the, study a false note? Tell me, would you read it? Would you read the note? No, you the just know it's not, you know it's false how, because how? of the truth. Explain, explain. I just did. You, you because it's not, it doesn't replicate. You're making no sense right now, you're making no sense. No, I am, I am, sir, I am. So you can't Allah false God even though you never read the book? No, Allah, Allah doesn't exist, but 
it, well, he's a, he's a, it's a demon. It's a demon god. A demon. Okay. So, so. He's a demon god. But, but. This Allah, he, he comes and deceives, right? Because he tells you Jesus isn't the Son of God. Where, where Jesus comes along and says, guys, I am the Son of God. So who do you believe? Do you believe Jesus, who said it first and then displayed it? How did he display it? Well, Jesus lived the perfect life. Jesus never sinned, guys. Jesus never sinned. You've got the Gospels. You've got the Synoptic Gospels. Go there. You'll never find him sinning. How else? Well, he healed the blind, and he healed the dumb, and he healed the deaf, and he raised the dead. Now, the thing is, is like, you know, if Jesus came along and said, you know, I'm the son of God, but then he didn't really do anything. He just, you know, he was a nice person, but he didn't actually do anything. Well, then, yeah, fair dues, disregard him, dismiss him. But he didn't. He actually came and did things that only the son of God could do. And by the way, guys, Jesus, the prophet, he said things that no other prophet would say. Now, and I'm going to quote some of them to you. Jesus said this, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. What's he saying? What's he saying? Right. Who's his Father? Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Right. Who's he talking about? Who's he talking about? Who's the Father? God, 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 it's God, right? He says this, he says, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. No prophet can say that. You must never say that if you are looking at me, you are seeing God. <laughs> you should never say that, you can't, you can't. That's, that's not good, a prophet shouldn't say that. A prophet always tells people about God, but will never say that he is God. Agree? Agree. Amen. Jesus said this, I and the Father are one. There's the Trinity. Me, Jesus, the Father are one. Our Father, God. The Father. Everywhere. In the Bible. Yeah, like even in the beginning, God, the first verse in the Bible, the word God is a plural word. It's not it's not singular. God. Yes. God. Yeah, the word God. So God, God, God. Yes. Not yes. Yeah, so you know like um, you know when Moses said the Lord your God is one? The word one there. No, he's not really you're not really listening. Anyway, I'll keep preaching. So listen, the Father and the Son are one. Okay? No prophet can ever say that him and God is one. I'll ask you a question in a minute. I'm gonna keep preaching for a sec. One oneness. Oneness, my friends, the Father, the Son. The Spirit, all in perfect communion, all of eternity. What's amazing is this. Listen, God came down to us. Think about it. Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? Come on, you should know this one. Emmanuel, what does it mean? God with us. Well done. <laughs> well done, sir. Exactly. God with us. But what about he's not? He's obviously, but he's not God, is he? He's not God. So listen. We pray to the Father through the Son. We can pray to Jesus if we want. I mean, people say, Jesus, help me, and he help them. Did Jesus say worship? Did Jesus say worship? Jesus received worship. Yes. Did he say in the Bible? Jesus said, "Worship me, I am God." He said that. Even even God the Father. Answer my question. Answer my question. I am. Even God the Father. I'm not talking. I'm talking about Jesus. I know. Did Jesus say worship? Even God the Father doesn't just say. I'm not talking worshiping. about the Father. I'm not talking about the Father. Did Jesus say worship? Peter got no. down on his. Did Jesus I'm, say I'm answering your question. No. no. Okay. Well, you know, he's not listening. He's not listening. Like, again. He's not listening. No, you're not listening. And now you're getting angry. And now you're swearing. Remember, don't worry about what goes in your mouth, like bacon. Worry about what comes out your mouth. Worry about what comes out your mouth. Well, you said, is it wrong to eat bacon earlier? And I said, no. I said, worry about what comes out your mouth. Not what goes in your mouth. Because what happens to what goes in your mouth? Comes out the other end. No, but that's true. That's science. <laughs> that's biology. I mean, come on. I didn't curse. I didn't blaspheme. I didn't swear. I just said, well, what goes on your mouth? It travels through small intestines. And then, you know, it comes out the other end. Listen, my friends. Listen. This guy asked me, where does Jesus say, bow down, worship me? Well, 
He says it in Revelation. But, before we even get to that, what about when Thomas got down before, he, before Jesus and he said, my Lord and my God. What did Jesus do? What did he do? Well, you know when Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God, what did Je Jesus said this. He said, wow, Thomas, a uh, nice one for believing <laughs> uh, after seeing us, but more blessed are those who haven't seen and believed. Notice that Jesus didn't say, Thomas, you can't call me God. No, you can't do that. That's not right. I'm just a prophet. Listen, if a prophet gets called God, yeah, yeah no, but... Yeah, you know, so you're saying Jesus, you're just a prophet. Oh, so you would say... Of God, oh God, which one is that? Yeah, me out, yeah, me out. You get ahead of yourself, sir. You get ahead of yourself. Now, check this out, right? If he's just a prophet, if he's just a prophet, if he's just a prophet, why did he just say, I'm not God? Instead, instead he says, you're blessed that you've seen this, but more blessed are those who have not seen and believed. What about when Peter got down? And he said, God! My God! This is, you know, people said to Jesus, God! And Jesus never said, no, 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 you must just call me prophet, Jesus, peace be upon him. No, they didn't. Je Jesus said, hey, you know what? Blessed are you. But more blessed are those who have not seen and believed. My friends, listen, there's no getting away from it. Read the Gospels. Jesus is God everywhere. In fact, let me read one right now to you. Oh, well, of course you're going to say that all the books are fake because that's like the end, the end of the argument, isn't it? Well, I don't believe it. Well, why did, why did Muhammad say respect the people of the book if it's just a lie? Why did he say, why did he say that if it's a lie? Really, he should say don't, don't respect that book, it's a lie. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. Because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. What is it to be equal with something? What is it to be equal? Yeah, same in value, same in worth. Jesus literally is equal with God. Equal. I mean, think about an equal. I mean, what's one plus one? It's a two. What's four times four? What's four times four? Sixteen. What's the square root of fifty-four? I don't know either. <laughs> but you know what it whatever number it is, it's an equal. And then that's the reality. You have to understand Jesus was making himself equal with God. Let me ask you one question. He's not a God. Okay, okay, okay. So why does it say he's God? Why does the book say that he's God? Look, I'll read it again. But he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Oh, they changed it, they changed it. Of course they changed it. Why? Well, it goes with your narrative, doesn't it? Like, you know, what's the best way to deny the truth of it? Well, it's been changed. You can't, can't trust it. No, no, my friend. You can't make up a Jesus Christ. There's no way. Have you seen what he did? Did you see how he spoke? He was like no other. There was no one like Jesus Christ. Absolutely not one. My friends, did Muhammad ever sin? No. He did. He did. He did. But, but, not only. But I'll tell you how he sinned. He had a six year old wife. But, but, hear this out. Show me where Jesus sinned. Show us where your wife You can't. Because he had no sin. He's not answering the question. No, answer the question. Show me in the Gospels where Jesus sinned. Oh, well, he got angry in the temple and he made a whip of cords. Ah, you mean righteous anger and justice because he had a zeal for his father's house. Come on, man. You, listen, you can't accuse the Lamb of God of sin. John the Baptist. Who's John the Baptist? He's a pretty holy guy. He wore camel's hair. He ate honey. And look what he says of Jesus Christ. What does he say? Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Oh, my friends, if you don't like it, close your ears and run away. Run away because the light is coming to the world. But people love darkness rather than the light. That's, come on, be honest. Let's be honest. You love sin. That's what it is, guys. You love your sin. You do, sir. You do, because I was just like you. I loved my sin. But obviously something changed along the way. 
in 2009, God saved us. God saved me. God saved people, doesn't he? You see, when someone gets saved, the tune changes about Jesus. You see, at one time, Jesus, he's kind of like pathetic. Uh, oh, he's a very important prophet. But he's really quite pathetic. Oh, he might be a really good man. But he's not that great. But no, when someone gets saved by Jesus Christ, all of a sudden he consumes your life. Everything radically changes. You're different. Your girlfriend will know about it. Your wife will know about it. Your children will certainly know about it. Everyone will know you're a Christian. You've lost your loops. And you're out. That's it. You're mental. But, but you, you know deep down, man, I'm saved. I'm forgiven. I'm changed. And something, something's happened to you. Listen. Everyone who gets saved, it's not like they were on Google one day, just like searching every, and then you know, I'm just seeking after God, I'm seeking after God, and then I found God. No, you're lost. You don't find yourself. God finds you in your sin. Don't ever tell me that you found God. He was not lost. You were. It's you that's lost. It's you who were rebelling against Him. It's you who were denying His Son. It's you. And me, and me. See me, I, I put myself in the same car. You already lost. You already lost. See, I got saved. I was lost, but now I'm found. I'm blamed, but now I'm saved. Well, you can say that all you want. But I've got forgiveness of sin. I have been found by God. And I am destined for heaven. I am going to heaven. But a Muslim can never say that they are definitely going to heaven. But the Christian can say, I know I have eternal life because my saviour died for me. You don't have a saviour. You're trying to, you know, get right with Allah through good works and good deeds. Your good deeds are filthy. How could you say that about proving it? Isaiah 64, 6. God sees all our righteous deeds as filthy rags. What? Who's he speaking to there? The Israelites, God's people. And he says to them, guys, you know your works, you know your good works, you know the good things you do. It's disgusting. I can't even look at it. You see, we often think, hey, we're, you know, we're not a male or anything, we're pretty good. And yeah, you know, God like sees all my good deeds and he's just going to, yeah, he let me into heaven. But you don't understand how holy God is and neither do I. But I have a certain idea. Uh, let me explain. I know that God is holy to the point where he's going to send people to hell. Guys, you don't want to go to hell, do you? Yeah, you're going to hell. I... Guys, listen, listen, I do not want you to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell, man. I want you to be saved. I want you to come to heaven. I don't want you to go to hell, sir. I want you to be forgiven of your sin. I want you to be changed. I want you to be renewed. Question? Is, let's say is Jesus and God a uh, human being and they're, they're a person actually and they're a person so let's say I'm just going to put this in a different terms if Jesus and God had a fight who would win? Yeah, sorry, sir, I thought your question was really not sensible at all, so I'm not going to answer it. Yeah, exactly, because you can't answer it. No, 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 I will, I will say this, I will say this. No, answer it, answer it. On the cross, God the Father poured out all of his wrath against sin on Jesus. That's not the fucking question. Answer yeah. my question. I'm, I'm actually you're answering answer it in a better way. No, you're not. Because if God Jesus did, had God, def a fight, God the Father you? did defeat the Son on behalf of sinners. Answer my question. God the Father poured out the wrath of God towards our sin on Jesus Christ. That's why on the cross Jesus said, it is finished. Tell us thy, it's done, it's paid for. Praise the Lord. Praise God that we can be forgiven. Praise God that we can be saved from our sins. Praise God that we don't have to die in your sin. Guys, listen, if you're rejecting Jesus, you're dying in your sin. Don't do that. I ask you to value your soul more. What will it profit a man? Let me ask you this question. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? He's not answering my question. No, no, he's not answer my question. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Nothing. Right? I mean, think about it, right? You get everything you want in life. You get all the 
Instagram followers, you get all the TikTok followers, you get rich, you get wealthy, and then you die and end up in hell. What did it profit you? I'll ask you a question in a sec, sir. What's it going to profit you? Guys, what's it going to profit you if you go all your life denying Christ as the Son of God, only to perish forever? When all along he opens his arms out to you and says, come to me, come to me, I'll change you. I'll make you new, I'll, make, I'll give you a new spirit. Listen, Christ is not your enemy. He is Emmanuel, God with us, and he extends his arms out to you and says, listen, repent and believe the gospel. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, when Esau was on the cross, yeah, why was he saying, Father, Father? Let him go. Help me. Well, why he was asking, because he was in the cross. Why did he ask for help from the Father? What, when he said? No, why? When he was in the cross. Yeah, what did he say? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, why you left me alone? So he was asking the help why is he asking from the Father. Why have you forsaken me? How come he's a God Some... asking help from well, the Father? Well, first of all, first of all, that's amazing. That's amazing. Psalm 22, verse 1, what does that say? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I lie, I lie. Yeah, 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 why you said that? Oh, why no, no, two sacks, two sacks. He said, show it. I'm going to show it. Why does your book keep getting changed? Why does the Bible keep... Okay, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, who is this God then? Eli, Eli, Jesus quoted that on the cross. No, that... Give me an answer now. I am. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to answer. Yeah. The reason why Jesus cried that out, first of all, it was a fulfillment of prophecy thousand years before Jesus was crucified. Secondly, it displayed the true agony that Christ was facing on the cross. He actually was being forsaken by his father. That's why. Well, you asked me why did Jesus say that? And I'm, I, I, why asking the help from the Father and he's the God and he was in the cross? No, the, the Son was experiencing... He was in the cross and asking... The Son... God, God knew. Guys, guys, guys. Why you let me alone? The Son was forsaken by the Father in order to save sinners. You don't know the hour. That's what happened. Jesus was forsaken by the Father because he was paying the price for sinners. And that's it. Two seconds here, it's alright, I, I, I can appreciate it, brother. Let me keep preaching though. Now check this out. If you don't like, but, but the thing is, sir, is, but you, uh, you, sir, you know, you, no, you, what, what you're bothered about is, you're like trying to, I'm asking you, if the Bible, if Jesus is inside you, I don't know. Sorry, sorry, sir. You're not answering, you're not answering. Sorry, what? Well, I'll just keep preaching. Listen, Jesus was actually forsaken by God. I, I appreciate that. Well, let the preacher preach. Let the preacher preach. Let the gospel go forth, sisters. Let the gospel go forth. I do appreciate you, though. I, I, God bless you. Now, listen. Jesus was indeed the Son of God. And on the cross, it does display his weakness. But at the same time, it displays the wisdom of God. Because here it is. There's a man. He's dying. There's no weaker place to be than dying. And yet, it was the place where God would vindicate sinners. It was the cross where God would forgive transgressors. See, me and you, me and you are sinful. Me and you have done things wrong. We need a savior. God is just and he won't overlook your sin. He has to give you what you deserve. But you can let him pay for it because he sent Jesus to die for our sins. That's good news. That's marvelous news. That's amazing news. God bless you. I'm going home.